There are a lot of different ways of clicking on game objects in Unity, and when you first get started you'll probably see something that looks like this, which utilizes Unity's built-in callbacks, but this quickly becomes difficult to work with if you're trying to build more complex behaviors and systems, so you revisit the World Wide Web to look for more answers. Then you find something that looks like this. Ah, let's create our own system using our own input and ray casting. Even though this affords a greater degree of control, you'll slowly realize that you have a decent amount of work ahead of you to get mouse in and out events, clicking, and a standardized way to determine what's clickable and what isn't. Now, what if I told you there's a built-in system that's the best of both worlds using Unity's event system? Sound good? Let's give it a look. And as always, we're first going to be taking a look at the documentation, where we're in the section for Unity's UI and we're looking at its event system. So if you've ever worked with interfaces or Canvas in Unity, the event system is most likely something you're somewhat familiar with. And with the event system, there's usually a couple things that accompanies it. We have an input module for figuring out what inputs we want to feed into it, as well as a raycaster. But if we go to this section under input modules, you'll see here that it can be used for sending events to scene objects. Normally this would be those buttons and those dropdowns we would have on our interface, but it kind of hints at, well, can we send messages to other scene objects? And if we move down to the raycaster section, you can kind of see that our sort of thought process is further cemented by this line here that says physics raycaster used for 3D physics elements. Well, that's interesting. Does that mean we can use a raycaster with the event system to click on objects within our scene? That's exactly what it means. And it even explains in this paragraph right below it where it says, um, if you have a 2D or 3D raycaster configured in your scene, it is easy to make non-UI elements receive messages from the input system. And if we want to do that, we simply need to attach a script that implements the event interfaces. And that's exactly what we're going to be doing in this video. It's actually like a two to three step process. So let's jump into Unity to see how it works. So now that we're in Unity, you'll kind of see that this is the scene that I showed in the intro. And if we click over here in the hierarchy, you'll see that we have our event system. I'm specifically using the new input system as well. So my input module may look a little bit different from yours if you're just using the standard input. But if you want to know where this is, you can right click in the hierarchy, go to UI and then event system. And then if I select my camera, you'll see that I also have a physics raycaster component added to this game object. So all we really need for this to work in our scene is an event system and this physics raycaster specifically on our camera. And with our scene ready to go, let's actually look at the code that we're going to need to run this. And in this script, you'll first see that I have all of these interfaces that I've implemented into this class that I've called event click. There are even more interfaces for dragging that we can implement, but these are most likely the ones that you're going to be working with. To get access to these different interfaces, you want to make sure that you're using the Unity Engine.Event Systems namespace and make sure that's at the top of your script. And if you've worked with interfaces, once you've sort of implemented them into your script, it's going to require you to add a few things to it so it'll compile correctly. So here I'm using pointer down, pointer up, pointer click, enter, and exit. And you'll see here that I have the five associated functions to make each of those things work. And this is where you can kind of see the power in this. It's really easy to add these to any particular script and it has all of the functionality for doing the enter and exit as well as the click, which it's very important to have a full click rather than just a simple down action, where a click is going to be both a down and a release on the same object. And you may be thinking, Andrew, well, this is fine and everything, but what about any additional information that I'd wanna work with within the script? And the one thing you'll notice is that within each of these functions, we also have an argument of type pointer event data. So let's look at that class to see what kind of information we can get from it. And once we have the class opened up, you'll see that we have so much information at our fingertips that we can work with. We can get the press position, the world position, the world normal, how long the cursor's been clicked, all that good stuff. So if there's some piece of information that you'll most likely need for your functionality, you'll probably be able to find it in the pointer event data. And that's pretty much it. To see this in action, I have a simple setup here for placing objects. Using this system, we're able to click a button and then click on our ground to place an object but we're also able to click and drag from a button out into the scene, then release to place the object. This seamless transition from UI to scene can be done fairly easily since we're using the same event system for both our UI and our game objects. But to specifically show you this sample in action, let's go back into Unity and let's hit play. And I have that particular cube selected in the hierarchy and when I click on it, you can see that it changes color. And that's about it for this quick tip on clicking on game objects. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, if you wanted to see a more involved example of how to use this or for different mechanics, feel free to leave a comment below. But I think that's it for me. I'll see you all in the next one.